Okay, boys and girls. Thursday's notes, um, final set of notes for your guided notes for unit six, which is over the economic indicators and the business cycle, which means this is finalizing another unit. We'll come to an end with unit six right here um, before spring break. Um, again, this will be the last thing we post for for work wise until after spring break, which is next week um, for you guys, which is the week of April the 5th through the 12th, that's Sunday to Sunday. Um, we'll pick back up with stuff on Monday, April the 13th. Um, hope you guys are still doing well. Um, let's cover the business cycle. And then again, you should have a warm up question that you should have answered already with an article about um, about a recession and then also there will be a quiz is that will cover everything we've covered so far with unit six with the economic indicators and the business cycle okay so um let's get to this um social studies economics macroeconomic standard one illustrate the means by which economic activity is measured okay Substandard F, define the stages of the business cycle, including peak, contraction, trough, recovery, expansion, as well as recession and depression, okay? So it's pretty straightforward. We're just, what is the business cycle? What are the parts of it? And what happens during those parts, okay? Um, so we jump right in. The business cycle is, of course, the natural fluctuation of a country's economy and I just go back here sorry what a way to start that last one right guys sorry about that okay so thought we clicked on the draw so business cycle is the natural fluctuation of a country's economy what does it mean when we say natural fluctuation we mean the ups and the downs of the economy okay everybody's economy goes through ups and downs Okay, um, every economy has good times, the ups. Everybody has bad times, the downs. You can't get away from it. You cannot avoid ups and downs. You're gonna have ups and downs, this natural fluctuation of a, of a country's economy. Um, if we just sit back and let the economy go and do what it's gonna do, it's gonna have good times and it's gonna have bad times. Okay, um, now we'll talk about this more in future, in a future unit, that the government likes to get involved and try to control that fluctuation. Okay, um, they try to control to keep the highs from getting too high and the lows from getting too low. Um, they try to flatten it out as much as possible, but there's always going to be ups and downs with it. Okay, and there are four stages um, to the business cycle. And as we said, all economies go through them at some point, but there are four stages, peak, contraction, trough, and expansion. And understand, the, these are the order they happen, okay? It doesn't necessarily start with a peak, okay? But every cycle, go, every economy goes through these cycles. After a peak, there is a contraction. After a contraction, there is a trough. After a trough, there is an expansion. Now, these vary in sizes and how bad or how good they are, but you go through all four parts of that business cycle. Now, what does it look like? What does a business cycle look like? Well, first off, this is where a lot of times each year um, kids get a little bit confused. I say, draw me a business cycle, and they start to draw the circular flow diagram, because they hear cycle and they think circle and they start to draw the boxes in the circles, but that's not it. We're talking about ups and downs. So when we talk about ups and downs, a business cycle looks like this right here. Okay, this is the business cycle. Um, again, it is that up and down of the economy. So it happens, as you see here, the, the business cycle happens over time. As you see on the bottom, um, axis here is time. So as time moves forward, so we start here 2019, 
2020, 21, 22, 23, and so on, right? So as time moves forward, the economy goes up and down. Is the economy up? Is the economy down? Um, and that's basically the way the business cycle works. Now, as we said, with this, there are four different phases of the business cycle. There is the peak, and then you have from here to here, you have the contraction period, okay? Then you bottom out and you hit the trough. And then once you bottom out and things start going up again, until you reach that next peak, you are in the expansion phase. Now, it says in the standards for you to also know what recovery is. Well, recovery is just simply that first part of the expansion phase until you reach the previous peak. Now, does that mean that you're, you're always gonna come up and reach the previous peak? No, this could turn down again, okay? Or it could go way up here, or it could keep going all the way up here, okay? How the business cycle plays out is different for every single time you go through the business cycle. We, we hit the trough here. Guess what? It could have kept going down and down and down, depending on how bad the economy was. So just understand, it's, it is an up and down. It's not always this perfect little up and down here. Um, it doesn't always reach back to where it was before. Sometimes you're, you start a recovery and then something happens and it goes bad again. Okay, you, you can't always predict how things are going to play out. Okay, so what does that mean? That, what does that mean for us? So let's look in a little more detail. The key thing I want you all to, to know and remember is that contraction and expansion, okay, are really the only true phases of the business cycle. The peak and the, the, peak and the trough are just turning points. Okay, so if we, if we go back here for just a second, okay, if we go back here, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. Okay, this peak here is just a turning point. Okay. There's that, that peak, that turning point there. There's your trough, there's your turning point right there. Okay, this is where it stops going up and it starts going down. This is where it stops going down and starts going up. Okay. That's the difference with the peak and the trough. You really don't know you're in the peak or the trough until you're out of it, right? Because you don't know this is the peak until things turn down. Because when you're here, you don't know if you're gonna continue going up. When you're here, you don't know that you hit the trough until it turns and starts getting better. Otherwise, it could keep going down, okay? So you're really, really your only true phases are the contraction phase and the expansion phase. Now, hopefully by looking at these, you've been able to just kind of see off the top of your head that the contraction phase is when things are bad, okay? Why? Because this is where the economy is going down, okay? The expansion phase is when things are good, when the economy is good. And you know that things are good because things are going up, okay? Basic and simple just parameters there. Now, let's look into it a little more detail. So as we look at these, again, the peak is the high point, trough is the low point, okay? If you need to pause that for a second, I'm gonna keep going, but if you need to pause it for a second just to fill in your notes, then do so. But I think those are pretty self-evident and pretty easy to figure out. Now, when it comes to the contraction phase, okay, let's look at our indicators and what we've seen. Let's take all our indicators that we've talked about so far and put them into play, put them into action with these phases of the business cycle, okay? So the contraction phase, again, we said that the contraction phase is when the economy is going down, okay, when the economy is bad. Okay, now, contraction phase can include recession or depression. Doesn't have to, 
okay? It does not have to, but it can include a recession or depression. Just because we're in a contraction phase, just because the economy is going down and is not as good as it once was, does not mean we've necessarily hit a recession or a depression, okay? It just means the economy is on a downturn. And when the economy is bad, the economy begins to shrink. Okay, so think about our economic indicators. Think about, we talked about GDP, which is how much money people are spending, right? How much money consumers, businesses, and the government are spending, right? So let's think about that. If the economy is shrinking, if the economy is bad, do you think people are spending money? No, people aren't spending money, businesses aren't spending money, government's not spending as much money, okay? Therefore, GDP is going down when the economy is bad, okay? Less spending, bad economy, okay? Now, how does that play here with aggregate demand and supply? Well, if businesses and people are spending less money, that means less demand and less supply, okay? We, we talked about this, think about it right now. People are worried about our economy right now. So people would say that our economy is in a contraction phase right now because people are spending less money people are buying less things everybody's at home everybody's just kind of you know we're buying the essentials toilet paper hand sanitizer lysol wipes all that good stuff um but we're not we're not eating out as much we're not going shopping as much we're not doing as much as we used to so the economy is starting to shrink gdp is going down aggregate demand aggregate supply is going down okay now this can last months or years okay now in our reality we expect this right now to only last for months we don't expect our contraction phase to last for years the expectation is hopefully we can flatten the curve get this virus under control and then once people get back to normal lives, the economy will pick back up. We don't see this lasting for years, okay? Now, we're not guaranteed that, but that's what the expectation is, okay? Now, what type of unemployment is going to occur during the contraction phase? What type of unemployment happens because the economy is bad? That is, cyclical because we're talking about and again this is why it is called cyclical unemployment because it deals with the business cycle okay that means cyclical unemployment occurs that means unemployment goes up in this situation okay so notice this gdp is going down aggregate demand and supply are going down unemployment is going up now it's not on these notes here okay but at the same time, CPI, your purchase, you know, the, um, the indicator that lets us know about inflation and prices, CPI is going to be going down at this point as well. CPI or inflation, okay, typically works the same way in the business cycle that GDP does, typically. Okay, not always, but typically. Because if people aren't buying, if people aren't buying stuff, what are businesses going to do with their prices? They're going to cut those prices to try and get people to buy stuff. Okay. Unemployment is going to go up because people are losing their jobs because businesses aren't making as much stuff. Now, what does the contraction end with? It ends with the trough. And it ends with the trough because now you've bottomed out and things are getting better, okay? So, bad times, contraction, GDP down, aggregate supply and demand are down, CPI, inflation is down because nobody's buying stuff. If you're not buying anything, all three of those are gonna go down. Now, because people aren't buying anything, the one thing that goes up is unemployment because, mm -hmm. hey, I'm sorry, Business isn't good. I can't keep. I can't keep paying you. Gotta let you go. You're great. You're you're great, but I can't do it. Okay. Um, 
And so that's uh, really kind of what we're seeing right now. You got a lot of people that are out of work, a lot of people getting let go, a lot of people filing for unemployment because their businesses are letting them go because nobody's spending the money and they just can't afford to stay open right now. Okay. Okay. Now let's look at the specifics of a recession and a depression. Okay. You need to know what these are. A recession is first off six consecutive months of negative GDP growth. GDP has to go down for six consecutive months to technically be a recession. Now you will hear probably a lot. If you're watching the news, keeping up with everything going on right now with COVID-19, you've probably heard the word recession get thrown around. And you, if you read the article for the warm up, you'll see that word recession getting used, even though we, we haven't had six consecutive months of negative GDP. There are situations like this sometimes where they go ahead and they use the word recession even though it hasn't met the technical definition of six consecutive months, okay? But just know the definition of a recession is six consecutive months of negative GDP growth, okay? Um, if, if you see it on a quiz or a test, on the, um, on the quizzes, or if, you know, if we, were, you, if we would have taken the EOC, you would see that and know that as well, okay? Now, what is a depression? Depression is worse, okay? This is worse. Because a depression is simply a deep or prolonged recession, okay? So a depression is when a recession goes on longer than we want it to or gets worse than we want it to. Okay, um, and what we mean by that is the, when we say a deep prolonged recession, here's the deep part. The deep part is the decline in real GDP exceeding 10%. So if real GDP dropped more than 10%, it's gone from a recession to a depression. Okay, or if a recession lasts for a long time, there's your prolonged part. The prolonged part means it lasts for two or more years. If you meet either one of those, they can you can technically call it a depression instead of a recession. Okay. Well, Coach Simmons, what about back in 08, 09 when my dad lost his job or um and I know you guys were little um back then. And so you don't really remember this stuff as maybe as much. But back in 08, 09, back when when we watched um from the Queen of Versailles video that we watched. Um, back when they got hit, how was, how was that not a depression? Well, that was technicalities. Because if you look at it here, the Great Recession, this is the Great Recession, it lasted from the fall of 2007 to 2009. It lasted 1.75 years, so just short of the two years. So if it would have lasted just a little bit longer, we would have had a depression instead of just a recession. Um, GDP wise, GDP only dropped between 4.7 and 5.1 percent, so around 5 percent. So it was only halfway there for the for the GDP drop. So it was it was a prolonged recession, just not prolonged enough, and it wasn't a deep enough recession to become a, an actual depression by definition. Okay, now compare this to the Great Depression, um, which you learned about in U.S. history. GDP dropped by half. Okay, by 50%, GDP was cut in half, and it lasted for, for 10 years. So compare those. As bad as a lot of people want to say the Great Recession was, it was nowhere near as bad as the Great Depression was. I don't think we'll ever get to a Great Depression again. Um, there's too many things in place with government control and government intervening to try and, again, level that um, that business cycle out to keep it from getting way too high or way too low. Okay. Now, um, then we look at the expansion phase of the business cycle. Um, this of course is the opposite of the contraction we said before. Expansion phase is when the business cycle is going up. Okay. This is when the economy is good. Okay. So if the economy is good, 
what are people doing? Money is being made, money is being spent. Okay, so with this, the economy is growing. That means GDP is going up. Okay, now what you got to worry about in this um, part of the business cycle is inflation. Okay, you don't have to worry about unemployment. Okay, unemployment is actually doing what right now? In this phase of the business cycle, unemployment is going down. Okay. Um, unemployment is going down because people have jobs. Okay. This is when things are good. So inflation is the worry in this part because your CPI is going up. Now, why is CPI and inflation going up? Because GDP is going up. Okay. The more people spend, the more prices are going to increase um, within this business cycle. Okay. And again, just like the contraction phase, it can last for months. It can last for years. It just, it, it all depends on how, how things play out, what kind of things the government puts into place. Um, well, coach, just as a little preview for you. Well, coach, why uh, we understand why the government would get involved to keep things from getting too bad. Why would they keep things from getting too good? Because you don't want your economy to get too good too fast because then it'll turn around and crash on you. What you want is to try and maintain slow and steady growth with the economy as it goes. Okay. And that's the kind of thing the government's going to get involved in and try to try to have and try to create. Okay. So that's the business cycle guys and girls. Um, pretty quick, easy and painless. Um, key things to remember and I'll go back here. Key things to remember. You got the four phases, you got the peak, which is your top, the trough, which is your bottom. You got the contraction phase. This is where the economy is going down, where the economy is bad. And again, let me go back. This is where GDP and CPI Are going down and where unemployment is going up. And then over here, you got, I want to just shorten these GDP and CPI are going down. I'm sorry, got ahead of myself there, guys. GDP and CPI are going up, unemployment is going down because times are getting good again, okay? If you can focus on those things, if you can think about, um, think about it in terms of money, okay? The money goes as the business cycle goes. If the business cycle is going down, money is going down. So think about if you had less money what would that do to your spending and prices? And what would that do to your employment? If money's going up, what would that do to your spending and your um, prices? And what would that do to your employment? Okay, so keep those things in mind. And I think you can probably um, figure things out. Okay, um, you guys stay safe. Make sure you got your warm up article and question done. Make sure you get your quizzes done. Um, everything for Simmons's classes are due by Sunday night, 1145. Um, there will again be no assignments next week because it's technically spring break. So enjoy your time off. Um, I know you guys are probably a little stir crazy. Um, get outside, get some exercise, just relax. Um, take the week off. You've been working hard as many of you have. Um, some of y'all may want to get caught up on some stuff not requiring you to by any means, but, um, but just keep in mind, once we get back from spring break, we'll hit the ground running again on April the 13th. So you guys stay safe, 
Um, keep your distance, wash your hands, all that stuff we keep hearing about, and um, we'll see y'all soon. Okay, bye.